It's happy hour again from Uptown New Orleans. Hello, I'm Grant Morris. Happy hour is part of the family of shows on the podcast network. It's neworleans.com. This is our first show for 2018. How about that? Yay. It's an exciting day. Yay. And I've determined not to fuck this up at all. When you walk into a bar in New Orleans and you pull up a bar stool, you never know who's going to be sitting on either side of you. What you do know, however, is no matter what they look like, what they're wearing, whether they just got out of a limousine or just got out of jail, they're going to be happy to talk to you because that's New Orleans and this is Happy Hour, a cocktail-fueled 60 minutes of random conversation with folks who have nothing in common. Other than we're all New Orleanians in a bar today, we're at the fabulous Wayfair on Ferret Street, which is a bar and a restaurant a couple of blocks down from Napoleon Avenue where they have a three-hour happy hour here every day. <laughs> Camp Morrison is here. Thank God you're here, Camp. How's your eyesight? It's okay. Can you read whatever's above my head, which is normally in front of me, but we're at a different table? This you see this blackboard? No, no, no I see. To, is no blackboard there? No, no blackboard. Have there. they moved that there is no over the vacation? Yeah. It's really gone? Yeah. Oh, well, now we're t- <laughs> we are fucked already then. Okay, well, let me try and wing it. Happy hour. I mean, what is it called? Wayfair. Wayfair has right. a three-hour happy hour here every day from three to six. They have half price drinks. And half price bar food as well. So come on down and enjoy happy hour anytime from three to six, seven days a week, or just stick around for the next hour and enjoy happy hour with us. How about that? It was pretty convincing, wasn't it? Without yes, anything to read. Job. Okay, so I have to say before we start, Camp Morrison is here. It's nice to meet you, Camp. I've heard so much about you. You're a private detective. Yes. That's the only thing I know about you, which is interesting right there in itself, isn't okay. it? Yeah, well, it can be. It must be a really great thing to be able to say at a dinner party. I'm a private detective. <laughs> well, as a, friends of mine have said before, you're more of a public detective than a private detective. <laughs> Everyone knows who you are? Uh, yes. It's a pretty hard <laughs> city to be a yeah. private detective in New Orleans, I would imagine. Everybody knows each yeah. other. Is be, I've, I've, you have over disguises? The year, I've, I have done disguises in the past, yes. Hmm. And Katrina Breeze is here. She's disguised herself as a queen. Yes, with a tiara. I actually am a queen of Ferret 2014. Wow. You're the queen of Ferret 2014. The queen of the Ferret Street Oyster Jam. Really? Yeah. Yes. Well, congratulations. That's Thank wonderful. You. I didn't know that. That's no, only you. four years ago. Yes. That's nice. Does, so that I guess, have, does that have anything to do with the original Ferret? The crew of Ferret? Um, no, but I will be parading with the crew of Ferret this One, year. Wonderful. Christian my, Boone is calling Boone for is Lynn calling. Drury. Lynn Drury is here, the fabulous singer-songwriter. Hey, I'm doing a podcast You right can now. put him on speakerphone mm-hmm. if you want to. Uh, we, no, we can't hear him. Uh, oh. Does he want hey, to... Hey, Boone. You would love... Hey, Why Boone. Why do you call him Boone and not Christian? Because he goes by Boone. Okay. Do you want to say that, that thing, that, that say the thing for the people on the radio? Oh, yeah, you're right, you bread rip. You rip. Okay, what did he? Right. What did he actually? Yeah, you're right. You, you said rip. um, you heard, babe. Okay. But it's like you heard. Yeah. He's, All right. You know, Boone. Boone's the man. Generation New Orleans. Okay. We love you. Bye. Boone. Unless, what's he calling about? Probably wants to play some music. Okay, so Lynn, you did me a huge service one time. Last time you were on the show. Yeah. You told me something that I've kept in my mind ever since then and I've used a number of times. You told me, not in a good way though, you told me that anytime some, a guy texts you after midnight or texts any woman after midnight and says, what's up girl? <laughs> that means they want to come over and have sex with you. Are you sticking with that? Or I have mean, you, ch- you look like you're going back on that now. Now I have my phone on do not disturb <laughs> between 12 a.m. Do you? And 10, yeah. And 10 a.m.? Yeah, Between midnight and 10 a.m., you have it yeah. on off. What, yeah. if, what if you're performing Because no one can midnight? text me. <laughs> so you, you, know. don't, you don't want to be having sex with anybody after midnight anymore. I still get texts after midnight, but it's not, you know. It's What's one. up, girl? Yeah, well, you know. What, what, are you, is, what are you up to? What are you up to is also another yeah. booty call text. I don't know. I'm just becoming less and less interested. In sex or yeah. in guys? I think that's where I'm at. Really? Yeah. You're moving away from sex in general. It's funny, um, it didn't take us long to get on to this. <laughs> you asked me. Well, I've so. always remembered that WhatsApp girl. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's kind of code for, yeah. you know. Katrina, do you have the same issue? About not liking sex? Oh, no, well, <laughs> well, that's a different question. Um, actually, I've discovered something new in sex that I wanted to share with um, Straight America yeah. on the radio today. Do you know about poppers? Poppers is amyl nitrate. Amyl nitrate. Yeah. yeah so camp, I think if you're really sick of it, you should we get yourself some VHS cleaner at the local <laughs> bookstore. VHS cleaner. 
Yes. Is there such a thing as VHS anymore? Yeah, and they're filthy, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Fair, I mean, when's the last time you saw a VHS machine? Yeah. Take me back to 1989. Really? Is what I'm saying. Is that what VHS cleaner is? It's Amo Nitrate. Took me back way before that. <laughs> Do you oh, remember really? doing Amo Nitrate? Yeah. When's the last time you did it? I remember the 70s, I would say. The 70s. <laughs> yeah. Wow. It's the worst thing. Have you ever done it, Katrina? Oh, it's horrible. Yeah, it's, it's my new favorite thing. You like it? Yeah. What, what do you like about it? I While like... she's having sex. <laughs> well, that's well, like, I think that's what, she was, that's what she was leading and, up to. And huff it, but it's legal, so we can talk about it. It is. Ah. I suppose it's legal. Where do you get it? At, at the, the VHS at the book cleaning store. store. You, get it, you get the VHS cleaner at the adult bookstore. Is that right? Yeah. Which, which adult, I'm trying to think if there is one even. Where is that? Um, I don't know where you get it here. Not by the airport? Or <laughs> online. There's lots of adult bookstores ah, okay. online. Okay, so you buy it online. and it's. Mm -hmm. But Amor Nitrate, is it, is it used for cleaning VHS machines? I don't think so. So what exactly? Because it used to be used. I think, I think that's some sort of marketing name for it. Yeah, that's its legal name. What's the name you buy it under when you Rush. buy it on? Rush. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. right. Is it actually called that? Yes. So I can remember doing that, mm -hmm. and you would take the top off the little vial, yeah. and you'd mm -hmm. sniff, and you get a terrible mm -hmm. headache. Wow, no, instantly. no headache. Yeah, <laughs> no, you didn't no. get a headache. No, really? Just, I haven't gotten a headache. Five seconds of bliss. I yeah, re I remember. <laughs> I remember seeing old winos do it, and they would take these incredible. In inhalations of it that would yeah. go on for five, six yeah. seconds, <laughs> yeah. and you just sort of stare at them, and they and wow. they stumble off. I it's, think Hunter Thompson <laughs> uses them in Fear and time. Loathing in Las Vegas a yeah. lot. Well, he used everything in Fear and Loathing. <laughs> That's Thomas. Really? Thomas, did you just read that he, recently? No, I'm just a big Hunter S. Thompson fan. <laughs> <Yeah>. And <laughs> right. I believe he talks about the uh, animals all the time. Yeah. And he'll ah. just, like, pop them and huff them. But I never knew what they were, nor that they were, like, legal over-the-counter thing. I didn't know you could buy them online at the... Um, <clears throat> At old bookstore, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Did you ever hear the old John Belushi I was story bring with uh, some. Hunter Thompson? <laughs> I'd love to hear it right now. Why didn't? Uh, is he was he was up there for a couple days and then up at Owl Creek Owl Farm, and uh, he there was uh, an older couple that lived down the, down the mountain from Hunter Thompson. And supposedly Belushi had been up there for a couple days and he came <laughs> running down the hill and said, "That man's crazy. That man's crazy. I can't take it anymore." And obviously they'd been on a two-day, two or three-day bender, and they they took and they knew who he was, of course. They took John Belushi in, they gave him food, they let him get cleaned up, and after about a day, he said, "You think you could take me back up the hill?" <laughs> <laughs> Is that a true story? Yeah. Where did you read that in the John Belushi book or the Hunter Thompson? I think it was the Hunter Thompson. It was an article about Hunter Thompson. Right. Yeah. So you have a lot of time to read stuff, I guess, while you're staking out. I uh, no, people's business. I didn't do a lot of staking out, but I did have one rule before I got married. Before you got married. Yeah, my wife made me change it. I didn't work when it rained. That was my rule in life. <laughs> and she said, I think you need to stop that. It's a pretty good it's rule a, in New Orleans because it's, it's raining every day. It's a, it's a great way to live your life, but, you know. I don't work when it rains. I don't work when it rains. <laughs> <laughs> and why did your wife make you change it? Now, we know your wife. Your wife is Kay Morrison. Yes. Who's the occasional wife. Yes. But she's not your occasional wife. She's your... Regular wife. 24-hour day wife. My wonderful wife, yes. Right. What do you call her? My real wife or <laughs> no, my non-occasional wife? Or just I, or I sometimes I still prefer to as my bride. Well, that's very nice. How Even though you're only allowed to do that for the first year of marriage, sometimes I regret. So she convinced you to work every day. Yeah. Or at least don't stop, don't stop for two hours for an afternoon. Right. Nap and read and. But why not? Relax. If you're your own boss and you can yeah, do whatever you're yeah, yeah, self-employed. How long have you been a private detective for? Since uh, this, this is my my second go at it. Since '88. What is you since 1988, and this is your second go at it? Yeah. I, Are you I, a lot older than you look? I am a lot older than you look. Really? Yeah. Come in here a little bit. Okay. Really? Um, you look pretty young. You don't look like you've had two careers and one started in 1988. I've had more than two careers. <laughs> really? Yeah. What was the first one? Well, I mean, I was a student for a long time, and then I traveled constantly for a long time. And, uh, but when I got out of LSU the first time, I moved to New Orleans, and I set up shop as a private investigator. But... Back in what years? In the 70s? That would be the name 79. Name when I trade era. Yeah, 79. Rush. And, and <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing, but, and I went out of business. So. But I always wanted to do it. So, so how do you get into business as a private detective? Just because I wanted to do it. Just put your shingle up and say I'm a... That's pretty much what you had to do back then. And you're not registered? There's no, like... Yeah, there is. There's, but there was... The state licensing came in in the early 90s when Edward came back for his last term. 
Edwin okay. Edwards. So up until then, up until, up until 1990, then, there was up, no Up until then, restriction. You, uh, in Jefferson Parish, you paid a $5 occupational license fee. Orleans, it was always much harder. $5. Yeah, or Orleans, you, Orleans, you had That's to, you had to, yeah. go, you had to go bow before the cops and say, you know, please let me do it, and they sort of, you know, eyed you over sneeringly, and, and you have to slip someone twenty bucks or something. Yeah, well, it wasn't, it wasn't quite like that, but it was you had to, you had to deal with uh, somebody in the special licensing bureau. Well, what was NOPD. it about you that made you think that would be a fun gig, and is, you know, someone was going to pay you to do it? Is when I was a kid, I. When I was a kid, I, st- I started reading Sherlock Holmes, and I graduated. Well, so did everybody. And then, I st- and then I graduated to Raymond Chandler and other more black mask stuff, and that's what I always wanted to do. And everybody, everyone read that, and everyone thought, you know, that would be a fun thing to do, but no one actually does it. Yeah. My best friend's ex-husband spent his life savings trying to, uh, staking out her, trying to take the kids away from her. Anyway, it didn't happen, but he paid a private detective you know, Lots a of lot money. of money for Did like a year to stake her out. And, and what was he try trying to, to find out? That she was to, what? Trying to accuse her of adultery, which she was not. She was just leaving an abusive man. Well, that's not... <laughs> a, that's not is it which, still... Which, which, uh, this is always take... I mean, that's when you're doing that kind of work. And that's when I started. I said, I didn't want to do that work. I didn't want to do insurance defense. And I didn't want to do domestic work. Well, right. you're very picky. No wonder you went out of business. <laughs> no, uh, no, that was the when I, when I started off the second time. That's okay. Nice. I wanted to do criminal work. That's what I wanted. The good honest, What exactly good honest is criminal, that? You know, criminal defense, murder, you know, crimes. So you'd get hired by a lawyer? Yes. So what, how does it work? Tell us what happens. Well, is eventually you get known and you, you, you can specialize in stuff people know to call you. And then you get... And but what do they say when they call you? I'm looking for... A lawyer's looking for what? For well, ev- evidence? F- first off, it'd be a lawyer. It'd be somebody I would know. They'd say, hey, Camp, I have this case, you know... Like what, what for example? Without anyone's name? Uh, no, like there are a couple of cases. Is, I guess the most famous case I ever did was the Benny Thompson case. Benny Thompson. I'm writing that down. Anyone know who he is, Lynn? Benny Thompson. All, no. pro, all pro. Katrina. All pro safety. Cleveland, from New Orleans, all pro safety for the Saints. Well, he actually, was in the, the Saints. He was for the Saints, but then he was all pro at Cleveland when he got traded there. Okay. But his wife was his wife and her boyfriend were wife, his wife, his son, and her boyfriend were murdered viciously. Oh. And as it, opposed to murdered calmly. Well, it was the the, the details are pretty horrific, but uh, did he do it? Well, it sure looked like he did it. And um, it was the this, wife this, this, and the this, wife's boyfriend. The wife's boyfriend. Jeez, you have to have a pretty courageous uh, personality to be screwing around on one of the professional. Well, no, they, 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 they had they had divorced. They had divorced. And oh, okay. he was and he, he had a like his his license plate was killer. <laughs> <laughs> That's a and, bit of a tip off. In the right? de- in the deposi- in the depositions during the depositions during the uh, divorce proceedings, he you know he f- screamed and threatened to kill her during the course of the you know in a trans- uh-huh. transcribed deposition. Wow. Is he in jail now? And he, uh, you know, this is a really long story. Uh, well, we've got a little bit of time. But it's is I've I've actually presented this in classrooms before as a sort of an hour long seminar. But he, you know, his alibi was weak. Uh, what, what, what was your connection with this? I, I, got, I, got hi- I got hired by a couple of attorneys that... <laughs> to try and pin it on him. No, 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 no. What yeah, I, I mean, he was, he was accused, and I was hired to you defend him. You were his him. defense. I was hired so what to are de- you looking for? Well, I was looking for anything, and then, it, you know, you interview him, and then he tells you, oh, I was with this girl at that time, and then you spend, you know, a week trying to find some girl... That, then you have to get her to fess up to what happened. And then she says, oh, well, no, it was actually a week before that. So he gave us, like, three false uh, alibis. And, and who's I, paying you, the attorney? The attorneys. And, uh, 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 so you're getting paid whether the guy goes to jail or not. And, uh, right? Uh, Is that yes, right? Yes, yes. Okay, so that's good. But I, uh, I, was like, I, said, I was like, did this son of a bitch do it? And then fi- and I sort of lost all desire in the case and then one day the the murder scene on Marson Road in New Orleans he said I've got to get into that house but just because the cops wouldn't let anybody in the house so I break into the house one day you broke into a crime scene yeah wow. that can't be right can it no it can't be but as I said the only time in my career I've ever said I was there for I was there for two minutes and I said bingo the son of a bitch didn't do it he didn't how could you prove he didn't do it by looking because at he had uh, he had two uh, left feet no no uh 
he he had he back this is back in '94, and he had been, he'd made longest phone calls, and he had like a 25 minute window between these long distance calls that we had a record of. And um, so I timed it from his house in New Orleans East to ah. his wife's house. And I said, he, I said he could have done it. But once I was in the house, who had ever been in the house had been there for several hours because it had been ransacked and the wall's been cut away and such like that. So Benny Thompson is a free man today thanks to the fact that you broke well, into a crime scene. Because I broke it. But... Good job. It, but, uh, but, but How the, much the, do we the, have the, to pay to hire you? Can anyone hire you? Anyone can hire me. So but I can I'm, hire you to trace around and follow, follow is, Katrina I, Breeze. What, what, what I was saying to, I, to Lynn I'd love here. to know what Katrina What I was saying to Lynn. I'll tell you everything. Oh, that's yeah. true. What I was saying <laughs> I to Lynn is, to is if, you're just, if you're following people, you're not really being an investigator. I mean, sometimes that's necessary, right. but you're just being a spy. <laughs> Lynn, what do you think? You'd be out for that. You'd enjoy being a spy, wouldn't you? I mean, it sounds intriguing. Why not? Uh, is, uh, yeah. Okay. But a spy has to be willing to break into places and kill people and things like that, too. I thought they yeah. had to be willing to wear diapers and sit in the car. <laughs> well, that's, right. I thought it wasn't that I glamorous. I thought the same thing. I thought yeah. you had a portable when I, when toilet. I, when I got into the business, <laughs> I, is, is nobody was doing, nobody was, it was just fat ex-cops doing, mm-hmm. they just wanted to do divorce work and sit in cars. I didn't want to do that. Mm-hmm. And nobody, and nobody would go into the projects and I said, I'll go into projects. I don't care. No, you probably don't, you apparently don't care. And, have uh, you ever been gotten in trouble? Huh? Have you ever gotten in trouble? Have people confronted you and oh, I've been, threatened yeah, you constantly? Oh, yes. Yeah, a lot. Many times, yeah, many, many times. Really? Yeah. He doesn't look easily shaken. I, I, is, I've been shaken, <laughs> but if you do, if you do it Looks like he could take care of himself, you yeah. think? Yeah. Yeah. I'd say. Okay, Lynn, we're going to stick to the plan here. Pick up that guitar. I'm going to make you play a song. Wow. Just like that I just, said I was going to. It just flew and by. I know. We have to just, we're going to stick to the plan here, which is making Lynn play a song early in the show before the whole thing gets away on us. And then we're going to come back and talk about you, Katrina, because I've got a lot of questions. Okay, I made you a special drink for 420. Uh, if you, you did. Want a sip. It's not 420, though. It is 420. Today. Yes, it is. Oh, you right mean 420 p.m.? You want a sip? Is that a, what is it? Is that it's CBD. It's, it's marijuana it's, and a it's solution. It's probably CBD. No, I'm all right right now. What is it, though? Um, it's just a you think I'm gonna water just take bottle. Some... <laughs> You're not supposed to just take drinks water. from strange people in a bar, just don't you know that? Stranger danger. Yeah, exactly. My attorney over here <laughs> says not... Okay, Lynn, so what, where are we when you're Korean now? Because the last... I would we've love been, we've, for we've... you to tell me that. Okay, well, let's go back a little bit. You were singer and songwriter of the year... In 2015, you were... I was nominated. I thought you were the winner of it. No. You won, you won a Grammy Award and an Academy <laughs> Award... In my mind. ...last year, as I... That wasn't true either. <laughs> Where is this research coming from? Now, you've been working and playing professionally for a long time now. Yes, I have. And you've made... What, now the, what was the last record that came out? Um, the record that I just came out with is... Oh, it's just out. It's called... Uh, well, it's 2017... Um, well, that's pretty close. What is it? Just it just came out in, well, nationally it came out September in 2017. Were you going to tell us the name of it or was it a secret? It's called Rise of the Fall, sorry. Rise of the Fall. I could have gotten it, Camp could have gotten that out of you <laughs> easily. That <laughs> yeah. was the last one. So that's available on your website. I just saw that a few minutes ago. You can play that for free um, it on lindrury.com. I like my friend said last night, which I thought was very clever, um, the record is free on the internet, but here it's fifteen dollars. So um, you do the math, you know. Support your local artists. I think. Is yeah, people don't mind giving you fifteen dollars if they're at a gig and they've already well, had a few drinks. I did bring a couple of CDs. Okay, good. Well, everyone's got a drink, so that might work. Okay, so you want to play something, and then we'll ask you some questions I'll, about it. Okay, I'll so what? Uh, um, yeah, I'll play you a song. Okay, what yeah. are you going to play? This song is called Anniversary. <clears throat> Let me start that over. He likes daddy issue girls and their strings of pearls. And he wraps them around them every chance he gets. He likes 420 and 5 o'clock. There was something he's supposed to remember, but he forgot. It was his anniversary, his anniversary. It was his 
has a ring of truth about it, that song. Thank you. Or That's the ring of experience. Mm, sounded like you actually <laughs> might have meant that. It sort of started out as something different, and then it, it culminated at a uh, Katrina anniversary <laughs> gig. Uh, it was a Katrina anniversary. Oh, I thought yeah. it was a personal anniversary, someone who broke no, your heart. Or it something. was um, supposed to be about, uh, you know, kind of like a started out like a different song. Like I was going to write a country song about a guy, like a parrot head. It's just, you know, right. just a cheater. And then, anyway. That's what I thought it was. <laughs> Did you guys think that? I, that, that was my take, too. <laughs> though I like the idea of a Katrina anniversary, though. Yeah. I like the so cheater idea. I, I, th I think that should be a, a, a citywide annual event where you, you take everything out of your freezer and you cook it. That's a good idea. <laughs> like that's all, that, that. Was always, that was always my plan, but it didn't take off. Yeah, it's funny. It's uh, I think about that sometimes. Yeah. My friend says, oh, you should just put a bunch of Ziploc bags and just put a bunch of ice in Ziploc bags and, um, and, and store those in, in your freezer. <laughs> just let your ice maker just keep making ice and just keep and, storing it yeah. just in case. <laughs> in case <laughs> it's sort of, of always what? stuck with me. Just in, in, in case, case you the, need that ice, you know? Suppose the freezer stops working. <laughs> yeah, so, but... I mean, the ice is all going to melt at the same rate. I mean... It won't I, matter that you've got tons of it in a plastic bag. It's all going to be melted within an hour or two anyway. We're never going down. New Orleans is never going no, down. I don't think and so. I'm going to go down with this ship anyway. So. Antoine's hmm. has a famous freezer story from Katrina. Antoine's restaurant? Yes. What? They, the, the, they had an old 1920s lead freezer, and they had all their steaks, all their... They're incredibly expensive steaks, and power went out for four or five days. And they said, "Oh well, just they just unplugged it and they just pushed it to the back and said, well, we'll worry about this later." And they supposedly got thirty thousand dollars or something in settlement just for the steaks. They were destroyed. And then sometime around November or December, they said, "Oh my God, we have to address that freezer." Oh no. Yeah. And they said, "Okay." So they put on masks and gloves and everything, and they. Opened it up to take all the to take all the steaks away, and they were still frozen. No. What? That's amazing. It, it was an old lead-lined yep. yep. freezer that was a hundred wow. years old. The steaks were in there tight. They never defrosted. That's a pretty impressive story. I wonder how much lead poisoning you would have gotten from ah. food that had been in there for months and nah, years. Don't worry about that. You would have lived Nothing. to tell the tale. <laughs> That's pretty. Yes, yeah, you're right. 
probably not any more than it's in our water right now. That's true. Yeah. Or our Mardi Gras beads. We don't have yeah, Mardi Gras, Mardi Gras beads. Now, Katrina, I said you're still famous for pointing out. Oh, I thought you were going to say out. the mob, the Mardi Gras mob hasn't killed me yet about that. Well, no, because you, <laughs> Katrina wants to ban Mardi Gras beads. No, not ban them, but get some regulations about what the ingredients are. Right. So tell the story. Mardi Gras beads are apparently made Please. from something called e-waste. Is that? Did I remember that correctly? Yes, exactly. Um, so I was. I've had a lot of experiences with Mardi Gras beads being a parade producer, and there's been times where. All of a sudden, we opened up a truck, and the the smells were just noxious. And yeah. um, so I started thinking over the years, there must be something really weird in here. And why are they so cheap? And why do they smell like this? And um, so after a couple of years, um, I worked with some people, and we got them tested at an independent research lab um, in partnership with Tulane and some other environmental groups. And what we found was that the lead levels inside Mardi Gras beads are as high as 29,000 parts per million, when the legal limit for a product that would be interacting with our children is about 90 parts per million. Wow. And lead is only one That's of impressive. many, many disgusting ingredients oh that are in there. But um, lead is one that we can all spell, so we understand that that one's wrong. So for they're us. all manufactured in China, correct? Yes. They're yeah. manufactured out of smashed up computers and VHS machines, I believe. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's a lot of amyl nitrate. So, so it's sort of like balled up uh, Chinese drywall. It's kind of like concept. the hot dogs right. yeah. of the Mardi Gras industry. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> but you wouldn't, as long as you don't eat them, and they're just around your neck for an hour or two. Actually, the uh, Louisiana Department of Health and... DEQ. Is that Department, what it is? The Department of Environmental Quality, yes. No, no, the the... Department of Health and Hospitals actually yeah. has come forward and said that even playing in the neutral ground for children could be dangerous. With Mardi Gras beads? No, no, actually just the soil that's be there now. Because of Because of the amount levels. of lead that's in but the that's soil. But that's nothing to do with Mardi Gras at all, right? Yeah, it is, because a lot of the Mardi Gras beads are landing there and then um, smash, leaching smash, into smash. the soil. So Mardi Gras beads are polluting our neutral grounds. I mean, among a lot of other things, yeah. but yes. I know that the park yes. in our neighborhood you know, they they took up the whole topsoil of Markey Park and replaced it because of the lead, mm -hmm. a playground there. Yeah, but that's from years of people sanding their houses down and getting into the well, ground and not decomposing. I mean, it's not, I'm not sure. Well, it's, it's well, everywhere lead, for lots everywhere. of different reasons here lead in New be, Orleans. Yeah, lead used to be used for everything. Is it... Really enough, because this is why everybody hates you, right? Because yeah. they, well, that's they, one of the reasons. Well, <laughs> how many, I don't think no one hates. Well, they hate this. Can you aspect. give us the top ten? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what are the reasons people hate you most? Um, because my name's kill, Katrina. Katrina. They hate right, that the most. Which is not your real off, name, of course. True. And then um, this summer they hated me a lot. The the Trump supporters. I had that. This summer, because of your boyfriend. Well, that too, but, but too. also I canceled the July 4th parade and that became international news. Yeah, you and got on, on Daily Mail, which is the yeah. UK rag. <laughs> yeah. So you're on it. Yeah. So you canceled the 4th of July boat parade mm -hmm. on Bayou St. John. Yes. Because of what exactly now? Well, for a lot of reasons, but one of the reasons that became the most important was that I wasn't really interested in seeing the Bohemia um, sort of use their art to represent Trump in that parade. Because um, the 4th of July celebrates America and America's president is President Trump and well, you don't actually, support it. It's for the USA, not, not America. We're you, the USA. Okay, yeah. okay USA. Yeah. So because the president of the United States he's, he's, is he's someone you don't leader. like, <laughs> so mm -hmm. therefore we have to not celebrate the United it, States anymore? No, it was more is that, that art about Trump was something I didn't like. <laughs> and I don't like Trump. Are you still sticking with that? But the art would have been all disparaging, wouldn't it? Yeah, but that still wouldn't have been the theme that we originally created. Uh, oh, you wanted you a know? more positive message. Yeah, okay. I mean, we were actually patriotic yeah. before that. Yeah. Well, that sure. was the whole thing, was you would sail down the bayou in your stars and stripes mm -hmm. and, and be like the Queen of America. But yeah. I'm not quite sure what's Trump got to do with it. He was elected, you know, for whatever reason. So the, the well, the fake news picked it up and um, <laughs> went with the headline, um, July 4th parade canceled because founder upset with Trump election results. Oh, wow. And then it Well, became, that's what I thought you were saying. Yeah. No, no, but I, what, what, I, what, saying, I, what I understand it? it is she didn't want... She was she, did, she didn't want the art to be 
focused on how bad of a man he is. Well, and then and then and then take away from take away from the original from the, and the, and the celebration. Trump sort of taking over your whole parade. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Even even disparaging artworks about him, mm -hmm. it's just like it, it puts the focus on him instead of. Yeah. Exactly. Mm. I get it. I, I get so it. It's basically censorship yeah. is what mm -hmm. you're talking about. So that's another reason people hate me. Right, I see. Yeah. Katrina. Do, they, do they still remember that? Um, or is that a, a lost in the bit. sands of time? Now? A little bit. Hmm. Katrina, yeah. what, were your, what were your thoughts on Crew de Vu last year? It was sad. Yeah, you didn't like that? I, I mean, I wanted to like it, but it, it just didn't feel happy seeing the, the sarcasm and it's still him. You know, it, it didn't feel joyous to me. Um, me personally, I've never done sarcastic work in parades. I don't, I don't produce sarcastic work. I produce irreverent work and um, all kinds of other work. There's a lot of crews that do, though. Mm -hmm. well, most, of the original, most of the original carnival was political satire, mm -hmm. originally. But, of course, it's probably a little bit stronger today than then. Mm -hmm. But I could be wrong. But that's part of the fun, is seeing those floats with all that stuff written on them. Yeah. And Stuff about the mayor yeah. and the city council and various scandals that have happened mm. during the, over the past 12 months, <laughs> yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it used to be more fun. Yeah. Well, you think it's not so much fun now because the president is someone. Yeah, and I, I actually don't psycho. think that we should that we should stop laughing at Trump and actually address what's going on. You know, what rather actually, than what is going on. Well. <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean. What are you going to do about it? The whole reason for Mardi Gras is to fly in the face of all that, isn't it? Or, or to distract yourself yes, from it. Yes, I mean, it. yeah. yeah. So I'd rather distract it. myself away from it. Right. Which is not the 4th of July. The 4th of July is something else altogether. Right. But, but Mardi Gras, mm -hmm. the whole point of Mardi Gras is to... Be irreverent. Exactly. But yeah. not all Trump-themed. You know, well, there's you have lots a choice. Of, there's lots well, of ways to be Well, we have a lot of stuff irreverent. of our own. We have a lot of scandals here of our own, don't we? Mm -hmm. was, was Still. Crew, was Crew View, uh, was it that? I didn't go last year. Was it Was it that anti-Trump? Was it everything? Every other float had yeah. like a, a Putin, like yeah, uh, having that. sex with Trump. <laughs> well, that yeah, was last more year. Paper sperm. More paper yeah. sperm. More paper sperm. Come on. Paper sperm. You, paper mache sperm. Yeah. Um, I never get tired. That's... Yeah, that's the, the classic very, very Crew de Vue. The very first parade I ever went to was many years ago, and I just... I have a picture of a parade of people holding sticks with a giant paper mache white sperm, you know. Spermies. Well, that's the closest. Spermy, is that what yeah. it is? I so, and they're still there every mm -hmm. year. Yeah. That's the anyway. closest you're going to get to sperm these days. That, <laughs> Apparently. It feels that way, but I'm sure it's not. <laughs> okay, well, that's good too. So you haven't given up having sex completely just with strangers oh, after midnight? Oh, no. Um, no, not at all. Okay. I mean, you well, know, I can always... Um, you know, not, I'm a, I'm a, really, I'm a no, good looking what? gal don't, still. Don't it's pretty easy don't to get some don't sperm. It's pretty easy to get sperm? Yeah. I would yeah. imagine. I'm sure that okay. you could find some if so, you wanted to. Yeah. So last, let's get on to this, Katrina. Have you got a prepared statement ready for when I ask you these questions about what happened after last time you were here? Oh, um, I, I thought about it, and I, I know that he was on your show, and he was really we, nice about everything he said about me. Okay, we have to go back. So I'm going to feel really guilty about what I'm going to say. So you have got a prepared, <laughs> you're, ready to t you're ready to answer these questions. I knew you'd have something you ready gonna, to say. Okay, so here's the setup. The, please. Here's the setup. So Katrina was on our show, uh, when was this? A year and a half ago? 420. Four, it was the 420, exactly. <laughs> 2016. And Frank Skurlock Sker was also on our show. Crazy Frank. Crazy Frank. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, you said Men that. Mentally you said ill Frank. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So this is before <laughs> he ran. Crazy makes him sane. That sounds like a fun, Trump huh? nickname. This is before Frank ran for mayor or jerked mm -hmm. off in the back of an Uber or any of that happened. Oh Did my that God. Well, we don't know where that really I, happened, I suppose. That we was after find. we broke up. Okay, so then then everybody leaves, the show's over, and everyone goes their separate ways. And we called the show for a joke, Mr. and Mrs. Frank Skurlock. That was the name of the title of the episode of Happy Hour. I don't know what we even said that for, but sure enough... I think he proposed to me on the show. No, nah, I, I don't think so. We didn't why. have any clue that was going to happen. <laughs> but eventually what happened, to cut a long story short, is that they ran off together... And Did they meet at the show? Yes. yes. They Aww. met right here, sitting right at this table, just like yeah. this. And Aww. there was chemistry immediately? Yeah. Oh, good. There was. Yeah, we had fun. Yeah, it was a fun we show. Had, we had a ton of fucking fun. But nobody... <laughs> Until he lost his mind. Nobody had guessed that they were going to get off, and then... Frank, I mean, I should let you tell the story, but it, the, the, what we heard from here was that 
I got it. Was it from Facebook? You sent me a Facebook message. Yeah, that from Florida. Frank had proposed to you mm -hmm. at the Kentucky Derby. Oh, and they, yeah. They left from here and went to Florida, went to the beach together mm -hmm. after the show, I guess, or the next day, was it? I think maybe two next, days later. Two days later. Next thing you know, Frank's proposed to Katrina and she agreed to marry him. Yeah. Well, it, there was a lot of pressure. He, like, sky rode at the Kentucky Derby and oh, no. everyone was looking. And There's some family <laughs> money there, right? Um, I guess so. Yeah. I, I mean, he, he makes money, too. Or oh. I think he did. Some, someone he seems money. to have a lot of money. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah, he, that's, that's his character. Okay. So wh what did you prepare to tell us? What was the prepared statement? Oh, well, I was thinking about maybe, like, one example of something fun we did together to tell you like about. Like a positive something. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. So he took me to Vegas, and we went and we saw Cirque du Soleil three times, which I had never seen. The same show or three no, different shows? No, three different Cirque shows. Okay. And then um, he asked me what I wanted to do, and by then I was like a total spoiled brat. So I was like, I want to see baby bears. And he was like, okay, okay, we'll find some baby bears. And so um, we end up at the private zoo of Siegfried and Roy, and um, who knew they had a private We're zoo. with Siegfried, and one um, of them has been mauled by a tiger. Or something. Yeah, I think that's Roy. We were not with that one. We were with the other one. Um, so you so, hung out with Siegfried at Siegfried yeah, Roy's private. So then um, Frank was like, she wants to see some baby bears, and Siegfried was like, um, we only have baby tigers. And so we went and we looked at the baby tigers, and then Frank was like, she really wants baby bears. And then Siegfried gave me a lecture about what a spoiled brat I was. Okay. <laughs> well, he seems to be and a And that fairly... was so amazing. I, that was one of my favorite moments, actually. Well, that's pretty cool. So Siegfried from Siegfried and Roy is a pretty good judge of human nature, apparently. Yes, yes. Well, who knew that was from an animal trainer? I guess you have to be able to read things if you're an animal trainer and you're in, the, in a casino mm -hmm. with, a ti with a live tiger or two. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that was an interesting story. But what was it like being like a kept woman for how long were you? It was very Melania-esque. Yeah. Yes. Well, he does look a little bit like Trump. And he's very Trumpy. He's a yeah. Trump supporter. He is a Trump supporter. So how We long... actually broke up on 120 via the inauguration day. That's when I, I really couldn't hang with it anymore. Who broke up with who? I broke up with him. How did you do that? By text or? Um, <laughs> actually, I, I scheduled it. I was like, how about inauguration is the end of this, you know, because that would be ridiculous. You just like, schedule it to you <laughs> in your own mind. And why had you had enough? What, were you, did you fall in love with Frank? I did for, for a minute, but I think that Frank was really interested in, in like having a different um, experience in life with me that was really different than his experience normally. And I had this weird, like, sexual fantasy and, I guess, like, fetish about, like, just dating a good old boy. Like, just some, like, old Republican, rich, good old boy, white patriarchy, you know, like, see what that was really about. Well, and you found a good one. Yeah. That's the dullest sounding fantasy I've ever heard. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, but you held out till you found somebody who's got a huge amount of money as well. Yeah. And there's a lot of those guys, And he's actually. fun. He's a really fun guy. He seems like he likes to have a lot of fun. He does, okay, constantly. So, so you, you, did you, are you the one that made him crazy? That's no, no. Went? He was like that when I found him. Okay. That's a good question, Camp, actually. Yeah. He was like that when you found him. Mm -hmm. So then, the, 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 the Trump success is what caused him to run for mayor of New Orleans. Um, I think partially. Yeah. Yeah, it might also be the mental illness. Well, what, what? I can't wait till we find Trump masturbating in the back of an Uber. <laughs> yeah. Well, do you know anything about that story? Is that true? Did that really happen? He got arrested. I don't know. Has he ever been? You don't know. You've lost touch with him. I, well, I blocked him. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> so if, when you. I, I mean, I don't. I. I guess I. I can see that story being true. Can you? Yes. That was really what I'm asking. <laughs> it just does not seem plausible to me that anybody I've ever met in my life would be jerking uh -huh. off in the back of an Uber. Have you ever been in and someone's, it's just a car. I mean, we were it's in like Ubers a together, so yeah. I know he does take Uber. <laughs> okay. But I mean, that's just somebody's car. Yeah. It's not like Uber is... We could get, we you know, get, get him on the... On the well, we could on get the camp to find out yeah, whether it really happened. You know, How I mean, much would it cost us I, to I, look into Frank? I, I think it would be appropriate just to take, it, take the policemen at their word in this case and <laughs> move on. The whole story just seems implausible to me, though, don't you think? Well, do you think maybe uh, uh, Latoya Cantrell, that was her way of assassinating his, <laughs> his potential... Getting, getting his, rid of the threat. Yeah. 
Yeah. No, I hadn't thought the, the of that. The dirty tricks of Latoya <laughs> Cantrell to become mayor. Maybe okay. it was the Yankees Maybe. trying to take him down. <laughs> Well, it just seems like that a was a delicious thing. pun right there, <laughs> Yankee. <laughs> ah. So you think there's some truth to it? You would believe it when it happened. You were, you weren't saying, "Oh my God," someone's um, trying to set Frank up. I bet she did say, "Oh my God," when she heard. <laughs> no, I didn't think someone was trying to set him up. It didn't seem like that. It seemed well, like a there was story. police reports. <laughs> and what mental illness does he have then? Well, it's not going to get us sued by anybody. I, um, I think that he's bipolar. Okay. I think he would agree to that. Well, I think he said that in his own defense. Yeah, that he I think was he said bipolar. it on your show and on the news. I think he said it in defense news. when he got... Yeah, I think he said <laughs> so it you're the, okay, you're safe. Yeah. yeah. No, I think it was his defense when he got uh, arrested by the cops for jerking off, and uh, allegedly jerking off in the back of an Uber, was that he was on some sort of medication mm-hmm. and he'd been drinking with it. Mm-hmm. Which brings me to Hangover Destroyer. <laughs> Actually, if he'd, if he'd taken a shot of Hangover Destroyer... Maybe life would be different for Frank mm-hmm. Scurlock today. Hangover Destroyer is the only all-natural product medically proven to prevent a hangover. Did you know that, Cam? No, I did not. Well, I'll tell you what you can do. You can go to the Hangover Destroyer website. Hey, that's a good idea. Lynn, play some music in the background here while I'm doing this. You can go to the Hangover Destroyer website. It's called hdestroyer.com. And if you write the words happy hour in the coupon code, you'll get 30% off of your first order of Hangover Destroyer so that you too can seize the dawn, Cam. Okay. Except the good news for you is I'm going to give you a hangover destroyer right I, now. I'll take one. You can take one and, and help yourself to it. It really works. Also, I want to say thanks to Basic Swim and Gym, where you can get a full range of fashion swimsuits, workout, and yoga clothes with style. Camp, you can get yourself a bikini, a one-piece, a cover-up. In fact, anything you need for the beach or the poolside is at Basics Swim and Gym. It's right next to and part of the lingerie store, Basics Underneath, on Magazine Street near Jefferson Avenue. And while we're about it, thanks to the Louisiana Legs, who make workout and yoga clothes. You ever done yoga, Cam? No. Lynn, are you a yoga person? Um, I was a yoga person. You gave it up. I, 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 I like yoga. yoga. I do yoga at home. Well, that's okay. Yeah. Not a lot of it. Why well, like you say like, like defensively, like it's weird? No, because I was very into yoga for. You were very into it. Yeah. Why was... did you stop? Um, you have I, a, you have, I don't did know. you have an incident? No, I did hurt my knee and I did hurt my hip. Mm, well. So maybe that was why. And then I sort of just do like five or ten minutes at home instead of an hour and a half of it. That's plenty, right? <laughs> I'm um, like, I'm good. Woo! Yeah. That's what I've done. I've done Sun five, salutation, five or ten I'm minutes. good. Yeah. Katrina, are you doing any yoga? No. Nothing. What do I you do I for did. exercise? Um, can... Yesterday I exercised by going out with the marching band practice parade in my neighborhood. I heard the... High school kids rolling by, and uh, I figured yeah, I'd go walk cool. with them. Nice. That's a good idea. That's yeah. a cool time of year when all the kids are out there mm-hmm. practicing. Anyway, listen, if you want to get some workout room. clothes to go out on the next second line, get some uh, clothes from Louisiana Legs where you can find designs that incorporate photographic art like Mardi Gras beads, for example. How about that? Boiled crawfish, wrought iron in France and caves in China. You can find Louisiana Legs on Facebook and Instagram, and you can buy Louisiana Legs on Etsy. So oh. how about that? That sounds great. Can yeah. I make some ads now, too? <laughs> yes, you want to plug something? What sure. about your bra? Happy Carnival from the Bearded Oysters. We would love to have you in our crew. Yay. The world is your oyster. Check us out at beardedoysters.org. Beardedoysters.org. And that's the largest women's marching crew in the world, I believe. Mm-hmm. Is that true? I don't believe that, actually. It says we that we do have some large women in the group. <laughs> <laughs> It says right here, this is the largest in the country with a current membership of over 850 It's women. true. Actually, Lynn's a member. Lynn, are you a bearded oyster? Yeah. Okay. Show your mark in. Okay, so <laughs> you can't say, tell me that it's bigger than Muses, is it, really? No, we don't all march. So, what does that mean? Like, we're There's not all together. There's a difference between a marching crew and a riding crew yes. as well. Oh, so Muses is a parade Yes, crew, and we are and a sub-crew. you're a marching crew. We're a sub-crew. So you're the biggest... Lady dance troupe. Lady, biggest lady dance troupe in the country. I think we are. That's impressive. Yeah. And you started the and whole thing. And we don't thing. even rehearse. <laughs> you don't have any rehearsals at all. No. I See, I want to choreograph we do, something. We do have some rehearsals for our pearls if they want to really step it up. So I give them the option to rehearse. If yeah. They'd like so to. when you're marching down the street in a parade, you mm-hmm. don't do any routines? Isn't that um, like... This year for Muses, we're going to be doing a really epic routine. Nice. You are, so there's rehearsal for that. Um, well, there's a video. Oh, you a... get to watch the video. Oh, that's a yeah. cool, cool way of doing it. So you don't have to show up somewhere on a yeah. freezing cold Monday mm-hmm. night. And... 
Get a babysitter and all that. Right. Okay. So with the snap of your fingers, you could have 850 angry women on the streets I, in an hour, right? I don't think so, but I, but I would angry? like to think that. Well, maybe. <laughs> They'd be we? most valuable if they were angry at that point. <laughs> You're talking about so we can achieve some political end, yeah, yes, like yes. a yeah. sort of a revolution of yes. some mm-hmm. sort. Oh, maybe, that's, whole... maybe, maybe that's what they should go towards. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Are you doing any sort of a theme like that? Is there any like Me Too stuff going on for Mardi Gras? That's an interesting um, angle. I, you know, I've been thinking about this whole like you two theme. Like I'm just gonna sexual her- sexually harass men and be like you too. Hashtag <laughs> you too. Okay, yeah. I'm not sure whether I that's... like it. Do you? Yeah, yeah. You're you up for you that too, one? Grant. Watch out. You too. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I don't think most guys would Thank object you. to being sexually harassed by women, frankly. I mean, if it was all in fun on the street. Well, it's not going to be in fun on the street. Oh, so it's still going to be like... true well, sexual you, harassment, it's not like, fun. But as long as you're not employing me, it's okay, isn't it? I don't know. I mean, it's if you... It's not called if sexual you, harassment. It's just it called drunk people in a bar. If it hurts your self-esteem and, you know, changes your life. What would you want to do? Fill me up on a bar? No, I just want to... Um, make you feel powerless. <laughs> Great. You don't think a, you don't think a cat call is sexual harassment? Oh boy. Well, it doesn't matter what I think, really, does it? Uh, sure. Why not? I, I mean, think the whole point of this is that we found out that we do realize that now that it is that it is harassment. So. I mean. But is that what you're talking about? You're talking about just whistling at me? Is that what you want? Let me lick I, your I, beard, I, old I'm man. I'm up for anything. Really? Yeah. yeah I mean, most. Most guys are not sex objects. I mean, no it, one, no one until looks at me. she says, "I really, really love you." <laughs> then that's when the true harassment then, starts. That, <laughs> that's that's, that's, that's exactly when the guy. That's serious. That's that's, that's yeah. y'all's ultimate weapon. No, actually, there's three better words than that. You know, actually, like I think that the magic words for women is "I love you," but the magic words for men is actually "I'm proud of you." <laughs> that's four words. <laughs> 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 well, that's four words though. Yeah, four words. Okay, and one so of them is a contraction. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay, the magic four words. <laughs> okay, the magic four words are I'm proud of you. Yes. Actually, I think it would be better if I, be, write that I, down. I think it should be I'm so proud of you. Oh, that's good. That sounds really authentic. That's even more <laughs> condescending. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. And what context is that delivered in exactly? Well, it's great because you can say it to anybody. It doesn't have to be someone that you're as intimate with as you would say, I love you. You know, like, I- I'm proud of you, Grant. This is a great show. Aww. Look at your That's eyes. So you're sweet. like sparkling. <laughs> yeah, no one's ever said anything nice to me like that before, Everybody Katrina. Everybody likes that. Now I'm totally now, in love with you. Now let me put my hands well, in your pants. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you see, most guys do not get felt up by women or even mm-hmm. drunk women in a bar, do they? Lynn, well, do you, if do they're you, in a position of power in? and you're... No, but that doesn't happen much. Or well, I guess it could. It could, and it, and it does, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure. Great. Yeah, you know Terry Crews? Terry? Terry Crews. He does the uh, Old Spice ads. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. yeah, he was in the Me Too stuff, but he was one of the only guys, and he had been groped by a producer. But by a man or a woman? By a male producer. So, yeah, men are still the... Well, Kevin Spacey... <laughs> are, are you guys producers? Yes, those yeah. guys okay. are over okay. there. Okay. So April's could, a producer. Cool. Also. April's, okay. pro, uh, April's groping I'd, people. Over. Allison's yeah, a producer. If mm. I had to pick, I think I'd like to be groped by April. If okay. the producers are coming to grope She's us. She's totally up for groping you. It's her Good. birthday, too. Yeah. That's yeah. her birthday. So, yeah, that would be a perfect birthday. She gets yeah. one yeah. free touch. <laughs> I like it. But that is not... Is that called sexual harassment? Not if I if ask you, if her you're asked to. for it. Right. Right. Okay. And I think but, actually touching might be assault. But is assault. Me Too going to be a part of... Is it... Is it too soon to do this for Mardi Gras? Or I, is it I, funny? I, th- I, th- I would think we're going to see something like that. From what, how do you make a joke out of this, though? I don't, I don't, who knows? Who it's knows? not that easy. I mean, there are a lot of, there are how a do lot. you not make a joke out of it? <laughs> like, well, really? You can, well, do you think um, it's going to be funny if you walk around with hashtag me too on your Mardi Gras outfit or paint it on your naked body? Someone's going to come up with Seriously. something. I'm a southern woman. But I've what been it? sexually harassed so many times. And yeah. it's, like, it's like, really? Yeah. Like, what's the big deal? Kind right. Of thing, you know? <laughs> like, suck it up. Perhaps that's well, a, well, perhaps that's a poor choice. Of, lick it up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is not the official stance of happy hour. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's interesting. But though, because I'm glad su- that it's out there. Yeah. You know, and I'm, I'm very glad. But do you think it's going to stick around, or this is like the ice bucket challenge, which is going to be gone? And, are you worried gonna... about the concentration camps where we're going to put all the men? <laughs> <laughs> is that what's going to happen? Yeah, yeah. Really? There's I mean, a lot of 
a lot of violence in the streets. We're going to have to figure out how to clean that up. That's a pretty good idea. That's a good idea for a story. That, has anyone done that? Concentration Where all the guys camps? get put in a concentration camp. You want to get back to the original civilization when they were all ruled by women? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, this is like a, a sci-fi per- plot. Yeah, I'm sure that someone's done this already. They're forced to perform, you know, fellatio. Yeah. What is that exactly? Is that a blowjob? Mm. I never can remember what. Do you know what that is? Is that a blowjob? It's a blowjob. Blow Where did that word come from? I'm sure, sure it's Greek. Greek. It's Greek. <laughs> I was, I was wondering where private dick comes from, actually. Oh, good oh, question. Pri- do you like being called a private dick? I, it, it's, it's, Is it it's cute? It's been said before, yes. Okay. But hey, it, Grant. It, that's an old, that's an old uh, 1930s term. It's British, I yeah. think. Hey, hey Grant. Yes, yeah, zero. From the Latin, philatus is the past tense of suck. So sucked is philatus. In what language are we talking about? That's Latin. Latin. Yep. Hmm. And what the lands were Rome, from Rome, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Is you it, got a cute mouth. Really? <laughs> and that's. I like when you move it around like that. Okay, this is exciting. Because <laughs> most guys don't get that kind of treatment from women. I can so, barely well, listen to what you say because your mouth is. Because you're fixated on my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. Okay. And Seems what, like Lynn's itching to do a song. And how would I, Lynn? You want to play something? How would I capitalize on that then? We're gonna listen to Lynn. Okay. Try and keep your hands to yourself. <laughs> Lynn, are you going to play something? Um, yeah, sure. Okay. I'm also Wait. going to be playing um, January 27th at the Foundation Room of House of Blues. Okay. And that's right before um, Lucinda Williams plays. You're opening for Lucinda so, Williams? Well, I'm in the Foundation Room at 7 before the show. But that yeah, is very, It's going to be very cool. cool. Hell and, um, yeah, that sure is. Also, Tuesdays, 16 and 30 of January at... Chickiwawa. There you go. So, Chickiwawa and House of Boys before Lucinda Williams. That is a congratulations <coughs> due there, I would say. Well, that's a big deal. Also, my album is nominated for Best Album for Offbeat and one of the top albums for the year. Okay, well, I'm glad you managed to slip that in at the end of the so, show. Um, congratulations. Yeah, so I'm nominated. If you want to go vote, you can go vote, offbeat.com, and go vote for okay. me and the band for Rise of the Fall, Best Country Folk Singer Songwriter Album, and Best Artist. I would love it if you did that. We would love to do that, even <laughs> though you're not really a country artist, but um, you're a Noel Americana artist. No. It says in my little research here that you trademark that term Noel Americana. Is that true? Noel Americana. Is well, it that's trademark? the name of my LLC. There's a few Noel Americana people I have there, but I think it sums up my music pretty good. Yeah, but did you trademark that? Do you own that? I did not trademark it. It says it right here in this thing. Did it really? TM, yes, and it also says on Katrina's that Katrina trademarked the words Marty Bra. I did. I really did. You own the word Marty yes. Bra. So if anyone uses that, they have to somehow what? Pay you something? Well, if they if they sell a product as a Marty called Marty Bra, right. yes. so you have a product called a Marty Bra, yes, which is a Marty Bra. Well, well, okay, <laughs> well, I'd like to talk to you about. That. Stop staring at my mouth. <laughs> Look at my my eyes are up here. What is uh, what Can is a what, what is a Marty Bra? It's a cone shaped bra with Marty Gras beads on it. Cone shape. Oh, so they stick out with. Oh, I've mm-hmm. seen you wear those. Okay, that's a Marty yes. Bra. Okay, cool. All right, Lynn, back to your Noel Americana song. Yeah, let's do a song. It's hard to, it's hard to, it's hard to pick a song. <clears throat> What's this one called? Um, let's do this one. I don't know. What kind of song do you want to hear? I don't know. What do you what's feel like? What's your sort of mood Lucinda are you Williams. in? <laughs> what sort of mood are you in? Um, Plaintive? I'll do this one. I'll do this one. It's called Baby Do Right. Oh, there's no harm in looking 
Was that, um, is that off the new album? That's it. Rise of the Fall? No. It's off an older album? Yeah. Okay, well, good idea that you did that one. Yeah, it fits in with the whole sexual harassment. (laughs) (laughs) So Rise of the Fall, we can steal that off Spotify and all the other normal places where it's on the internet. And we can go buy it at lindrury.com if we we wanted to. Please. Okay, well, we encourage you to do that. Also want to mention before we get out of here today, that um, we make a whole bunch of podcasts here. At, where we're part of a company called I Know Broadcasting. And one of our podcasts in this little family is a podcast about death called Death the Podcast. And it was named as one of the best podcasts of 2017. Way to go. In the whole country, one of the top 40 podcasts in the country by Paste Magazine, which was it's a pretty impressive that achievement, pretty actually. Impressive. So if you're interested in death... You can. I am. Fi- you love death because you've love, got a whole business yeah, we haven't I'm, even talked about. I'm called, death positive. I know. <laughs> Katrina has a whole business called Fantastic Casket, oh. which is about eco-friendly burial. Ego-friendly. Yeah, it's E-G-O. eco-friendly. Yeah. It's a great idea. We didn't even get onto that, and now we have to get out of here. I know. The green pod. Jesus Christ. No. It's close. How did we not even mention that, Katrina? I know. That's I'll be bad. back. Okay, we'll have to have you back to talk about death again. But death, the podcast, is easily found anywhere you get podcasts. Just search for Death, the podcast. Okay. And take a listen to it. It's really awesome. It's a podcast about death, and it's hosted by uh, Ariana Elfant, who's a clinical psychologist here in New Orleans. Wow. I think you'll find it interesting. Have you heard it, Katrina? Yes. It's good, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is it's good. It's interesting. She's Everything great. you guys do is the good. Sh- yeah. Well, that's very kind of you. That's because you like my mouth. <laughs> I know that. Katrina Breeze has been here today. Thank you so much. You can find more about Katrina on our website. It's neworleans.com. We'll have a link to her stuff. Camp Morrison... I can't find a website for you anywhere. You don't believe in that it, sort no, of... No, I don't believe in it either. Yeah. So how, I have, I have one theory you? in life. It, one of my theories in life is whatever information you give out may not hurt you, but it'll never help you. 
Really? Yeah. yeah. Everything, I, okay. anything you give out about yourself can only come back to haunt me. No, that makes that a is a sense. very yeah. strange marketing philosophy, I <laughs> must Unless say. Unless like poppers. I, <laughs> we did find out that we all like poppers here on today's show. I think it's going to come back good after you that's, with that. Well, that's a nice... We pity you didn't bring any with you, though, because we could all got a terrible uh, headache. I was a little nervous. We just, it's you illegal, know. though. No... Legal you say, or you say it's le- you it's say it's legal. legal. I have no for idea. For VHS cleaning. For VHS cleaning. That's a good way to end the show. I totally forgot that we talked about Rush. It really takes you back, doesn't it, Camp? Yes. The 70s. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so if I'm looking for a private detective, it's no good looking for you because it's a secret. Yes, it is. I have to just hunt you down some other way. No. I have to find another private detective to find you, <laughs> to hire you. I've, I've, I've slowed down. It's, it's, it's hard to keep up the pace of okay. being an avenging angel of justice. You know? <laughs> okay, so you're not looking for any work? No. All right, well, that's a good position to be in. Yeah. And Lynn Drury, we can find you on uh, Spotify, and I have a link to you or stuff on our website, too. It's neworleans.com. LynnDrury.com Lynn Drury D-R-U-R-Y mm-hmm. and Andrew mm-hmm. Duhon is not here today you might have noticed that he's on the road somewhere you can find him by uh, going to AndrewDuhon.com see if he's in a town near you somewhere hey thanks everybody it's happy hour for another week we're thanks. back it's 2018 how exciting Wonderful. it's going to be a great year yes it is don't you think yes. can't, can't be worse than 2017 yes it could yes. <laughs> our show is produced by Graham DuPonte our associate producers are Alison Moon and April Stolf whose birthday it is today happy birthday happy April birthday. Christian Unruh is our music director and John Van Wyatt is our music producer Thomas Walsh is our technical director and our Facebook live feed director is Asher Griffith who's right here Yay. Our fact checker and social media consultant is Andrew Searock Searock. And our theme music was written by and is currently being played by Mitch Foreman. If you'd like to be on our show and you can stay upright for about an hour while drinking alcohol, drop us a line. Our address is on our website, it's neworleans.com. We can also find many other hours of happy hour that we've recorded previously, along with other shows such as Out to Lunch with Peter Raschuti, live from Commander's Palace, Louisiana Eats with Poppy Tooker, and of course, now famous Death, the podcast. You can also find other great Louisiana podcasts. Well... That's an excellent accident. Drinks everywhere. You can find other great Louisiana podcasts at itsacadiana.com and itsbatonrouge.la. You can keep up with us on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and a whole bunch of other time-sucking social media as well. And all of it, we're called It's New Orleans. Have you got that alcohol all over your clothes, Lynn? Yes. Oh, my God. Are you freezing? (laughs) At least it's not that cold outside. You can find photos from this show on itsneworleans.com. Man, it smells good, though. And on our Facebook page, those photos are taken today by Alison Moon. If you listen to this on your favorite podcast app, thanks for subscribing to us. Take a moment to rate and review us. If you've got a moment, that helps other people find us. Our show is recorded live today at Wayfair on Fred Street in New Orleans. Happy Hours of Production of Lionel Broadcasting for itsneworleans.com. For Andrew Duhon, we're back here next week or maybe the week after. Everyone else around the table here at Wayfair and back at our office at INO Broadcasting. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Grant Morris. I'll see you back here next week again for more Happy Hour. I can't believe it. That Gerald is presenting the quarterly budget report with finger puppets? Look, here comes a 1.7% decrease in fixed overhead. Hello, everybody. No, I can't believe how easy it was to save hundreds of dollars on my car insurance with Geico. Who are you? The projected increase in organic Q3 revenue. Hooray! Believe it, Geico could save you 15% or more on car insurance.